to I would love to give a warm welcome to our guest keynote speaker, Mr. Wally Richardson. Um, just a little bit before he starts, it's safe to say that Penn Stater, that this Penn Stater and a former NFL quarterback, Wally Richardson, may know a little bit about leadership and success. But would you like to learn a little bit more about grit, success, and leadership? If so, this is the session for you. So suit up and get ready for the fourth and long. And of course, before he starts a little bit about him, Wally Richardson was a student athlete here at Penn State from 1992 to 1996, playing quarterback on the football team. He was a four-time academic All Big Ten honoree and his <clears throat> apologies and recipient of the prestigious National Football Foundation Scholarship Athlete Award. His record as a two-year starter was 20 to five. He was a seventh round seventh round draft pick of the Baltimore Ravens in the 1997 NFL draft. He was a member of the club for, from 1997 to 1998 and briefly with the Falcons at the end of the 1999 season. While he also played for the New York, New Jersey uh, hitman of the XFL in 20, 2001. So please give a warm welcome to Mr. Wally Richardson. Thanks everyone. Hello, uh, it's nice to be joining you guys this afternoon. And I appreciate you for having me on here. I uh, remember finally Achievers Weekend when I was an undergraduate student here at Penn State and uh, I'm really excited to be able to speak to you this afternoon. But just like to share a few things with you uh, about my journey at Penn State and beyond. So uh, my talk is titled Building for the Future. And I wanna just talk to you guys a little bit as you're about to embark on choosing what college you're gonna be going to, uh, some things that you should be thinking about as you make that decision. And of course, uh, we all know that you've been accepted to Penn State University and we hope that you choose to come here, but just wanna give you a little bit uh, to think about as you make that decision and consider as you go through the process. But first, I'll give you a little bit more information about me. Uh, I grew up in a small town in South Carolina named Sumter, which is about 45 minutes west of the capital of Columbia, South Carolina. And my family and I, we moved there when I was about four years old. So that's where I spent all of my childhood. Had a pretty good childhood. Uh, both of my parents were involved in education. Uh, my mother was a school teacher for 30 years and my dad <coughs> was also involved in school administration. At one point was a school superintendent in the state of South Carolina. And I played several sports growing up, mainly football and basketball. Basketball, I started a little bit before playing football in the third grade and uh, interesting story about football. My dad didn't really want me to play until I got into the ninth grade. And, uh, you know, I had to convince him that I was able to play in seventh grade and I'm glad that he let me do that. But my uh, actual sixth grade English teacher, her husband was the football coach of the football team at my middle school. And uh, she convinced him that she had found her quarterback. So I ended up starting as a seventh grader the next year. And uh, that was a great experience for me. Like I said, uh, education was always important to my family. Uh, and, and one thing that I really took for granted growing up is that three of my four grandparents went to college. And when you think about that time frame, that was in the 1940s where that wasn't a regular occurrence for a lot of people of color, especially in some of the Southern states. So I'm really proud of that. As I've gotten older, I 
have gained a greater appreciation for that. But I uh, always took my academics very seriously and was able to do well in school. And I think that really enabled me to be able to choose where I wanted to spend my time when I went to, uh, was able to have the opportunity to go to Penn State. So I earned a scholarship there in 1992 and uh, had a really good time. We were really successful here. We had one undefeated season and uh, really should have had opportunity to play for the national championship. And uh, as part of the team, you know, I played as a freshman. I en ended up taking a non-traditional route because I redshirted my second year. Uh, we had some injuries to quarterbacks my first year and I played redshirted my second year and then played my, the rest of the three years of my time at Penn State. And, uh, you know, actually, before I went to Penn State, the summer leading up to going, I had a job at a paint factory in Sumter. And I had a good job because I was up in the lab and mixing chemicals up and doing things under the air condition. But there were some times during that summer where there was a plant where the rare supplies were and I have to go down there and it was extremely hot. Uh, the people, the laborers that were in there were sweating out of their shirts and, and just hot and spending, you know, eight hours in that factory type environment. And that really helped me to realize that it was important for me to get my education because <clears throat> I saw the difference. What having an education at that point meant being in a lab and, and mixing chemicals up or having to use my hands and, and, and labor to actually earn a living for myself. So it was important that I had that experience and I'm glad that I did. That, that made it easy for me to realize at that time that I needed to finish school. And like I said, you know, I played here, was, had some good success and uh, got drafted by the Baltimore Ravens in the 97 draft. I was a seventh round draft pick, but, uh, you know, it's not a guarantee that a seventh round draft pick makes the team. So uh, I had to earn my spot on the way to the team because a lot of times people don't realize the biggest difference between college and professional ranks is uh, you play against grown men in the, in the league. And a lot of these guys have families and responsibilities, uh, taking care of people. And in college, it's not like that. You've got 85 or so guys on the team that you're all growing together and going to different social events, learning one another, learning about yourself. So it's a different type of environment. But uh, <clears throat> I made a team my rookie year and also spent the 1998 season with the Ravens. And uh, that's before the Ravens were <laughs> the solid team that they are now, but it was a great experience for me. But uh, with that being said, this is what happens next. So if you read the headline here, you see that I got cut uh, going into my third year uh, of playing in the NFL. So that was really disappointing for me. And uh, the longer I've been away from it, I've been able to see how big a deal that was. Uh, when they were introducing me in my bio, it said that I spent the end of one season with the Falcons, which I did in 1999. And I spent two games with them and uh, got released by them that following off season. And as I go back to it, you know, one of the things that happens, you know, like I said, I wasn't a first round draft pick. I didn't make, you know, guaranteed money like some of the higher draft picks did. So I had to work for a living and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now so I can provide for myself. But you know, it was a great learning lesson for me. Uh, that was the biggest setback I'd had in my life uh, at that time, uh, being released from the team, and, and I had to figure out what I wanted to do next. So I bounced around to a couple of teams, but at the same time, it got to a point I had to figure out what I wanted to do next. And that's where, you know, I started thinking about life after football. And as a... Uh, undergraduate student at Penn State, I was able to earn a, 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 a National Football Foundation scholarship, which was around $18,000 at the time. And uh, as I was figuring out the next step of my life, 
you know, I came back to Penn State and earned my master's in higher education. And uh, that was something that gave me some time to figure out what I wanted to do and be back in the friendly confines of State College, which I was very familiar with. And what I also discovered that is that when you're not playing football, you have a lot more time on your hands. So I got to enjoy some of the things that I didn't play in football as an undergraduate here, being back on campus and, and being able to really concentrate on my studies. So after I completed my master's degree here at Penn State, I stayed on and got a job working for academic support with uh, student athletes. And I worked with the football team here. So that was a environment I was very familiar with and uh, worked with uh, several student athletes here at Penn State. I spent four years here, left here in, in 2007 to go to the University of Georgia. And I worked there for four years worked with several other sports besides football, like baseball and women's volleyball, <clears throat> and spent four years there before leaving again uh, to go to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where I spent about 18 months working as the director of football academic support for that program there. But I was kind of looking for a change um, as I got into my professional career and trying to figure out uh, what next steps were for me. You know, I discovered that my patience was wearing a little bit thin with some of the uh, issues I had to deal with in that current profession. So the opportunity presented itself where I was able to come back here to Penn State and got a job in development and alumni relations. And I'm still in that position. It's been eight years now. I'm the director of the Penn State Football's Letterman, Penn State Football Letterman's Club. So I spend a lot of time working with all the former players uh, that played here at Penn State. And a lot of the guys, you know, I know because of my time here as an athlete, a lot of guys are teammates of mine. So that's been a great opportunity for me also to be able to connect with those guys and see them regularly, especially during football season. And, you know, you guys that get to the age at one point where you might be working <clears throat> at an institution of higher learning and guys you went to school with will have their kids going to school with and you're working there and, and that's a big change, but you know, we all age and you know, you just try to do the best you can, but it's, it's kind of neat to see guys that I play with and have their kids going to school here now. So <clears throat> season opportunities, I think that's something we all need to take advantage of, especially <clears throat> when we get the chance to do it. You know, there's always op different opportunities out there for you. Uh, when I was in high school, again, you know, I took my academics seriously, but I also was very serious about playing football. And there was an opportunity that presented itself for me to spend a week at the South Carolina's Governor's School. And, you know, I was really concerned about it because it was going to take me away from my training and what I was trying to do. But it also allowed me to meet several other very talented South Carolina, South Carolina students that were going to do some great things. So. That was something that was outside of the box for me that I necessarily wasn't sold on at the beginning. But after talking to several of my teachers at my high school, they told me that's something I needed to do. So, you know, make sure you keep your mind open to different opportunities that present themselves to you. And uh, we also, you know, we, we all feel very comfortable with things that we're good at. And we always are trying to be involved with things of those natures that nature, but we also need to make sure that whatever we might not be as good at or might be a particular weakness of ours is that we try to get it up to the point where it's a strength of ours too. So if you know it's a weakness, you wanna make sure that you're working at it to eliminate that from being a weakness for you. It's something that you can try to become competent in and work at. And the way you find out about different opportunities is to make sure you ask questions as you the people you, you, you spend time around and, and do your research. That's always important. You know, I think uh, libraries are one of the most underused facilities uh, <laughs> across the nation. Uh, so when this pandemic is over, if you want to find a quiet place, make sure you go to the library. So leadership, uh, you know, as, as you guys know now, you know, I was a quarterback when I played football. So that's definitely a leadership position. And uh, as I was thinking about leadership, 
I looked up the dictionary in dictionary.com, as you can see, according to them, a leader is the position or function of a leader or leadership, the position or function of a leader, a person who guides or directs a group. So as a quarterback, that's what you're doing all the time. When I played football, we used to have a huddle regularly. That doesn't happen so much anymore on the offensive side of football, but you're always leading people. The quarterback gets to play from the sideline. He tells the guys in the huddle what the play is. He's got to know where the ball is supposed to go. If it's a two deep coverage, a three deep coverage, if he's got to check out to a different play, if the defense is, bl is blitzing. So there's a lot of responsibility that comes with leadership. And uh, one of the things that I always remember one of my high school coaches telling me was he, he used to say, you know, I wouldn't ask you guys to do something that I wouldn't do myself. So that's one of the biggest things uh, in the type of roles that I'm in trying to make sure that I don't ask people not to do anything I wouldn't do myself. And sometimes that can be uncomfortable because a lot of times you have to make sure you do different things to, to, to make things work, but you want to make sure that you always are putting people and, and not making them do something you wouldn't do yourself. And I think another thing, when you're leading people, you have to be honest with them. You don't want to sugarcoat things and tell people one thing and, and what ends up happening is the completely different thing. That's not a good way of doing business and, and you lose a lot of respect that way. So you want to be honest with somebody, you know, they're not going to always be happy with you. And, and as a, a leader, you're not going to make everybody happy but you want to make sure that you do the best that you can for all parties involved and that will benefit the most people. And one thing I would encourage you guys right now is uh, spend time around the people that help to make you better. Don't, don't spend your time around people that are going to get you in situations that are not going to be uh, beneficial to you or, or put you in harm's way. You want to get around people that are going to help you be a better version of yourselves. And, you know, I'm going in with this, uh, just navigating college. There's several things you need to do. And uh, this is just some of the things that came to mind for me is just make sure you utilize all your resources. I know I jumped on here and they were telling you about different financial aid packages that might be available to you to use to go to Penn State. But Make sure you look online for different grants that are available to college students. You know, some of them are really uh, out in left field. If you, you know, are left-handed uh, and you sleep on your right side, there might be a grant for you to get some money to go to school. So just make sure you explore every avenue in that regard. You know, a lot of times when people are in school, uh, they think it all is going to be easy. People don't take the time to get to know their professors, but those can be some very meaningful relationships for you. Your, your professors are the ones that kind of help you make through, get you through things. And you want to meet with them because when it comes to the end of the semester, when things are happening, you want to make sure that you uh, use your time with them because if they have a relationship and you don't just email, but you actually go to their office and sit aside and spend some time with them, that will probably benefit you more than going the email route. Don't waste your time. You know, this is a big investment you're about to make going to college. So you wanna make sure that you make the best use of your time while you're here uh, and, and get the things done that, that you need to get done to be successful. Because right now you're setting the bar for your future and the things that you do when you leave here. And you know, what will your contribution be to the university community? There's all kinds of organizations on campus. I would stress to you to make sure that you do the best you can do to find the things that you're interested in and that you can contribute uh, positively to the environment. And when you have conversations with people, make sure you have the ability to have meaningful conversations with them. Make sure you read. I think that's important to know current events and be able to have conversations with the people that you meet that are new. And uh, everything is not going to be easy when you go to college. Sometimes you're not going to do as well on, as, on a test as you expected to, but learn from your failures. Just don't make the same mistakes twice. Just keep pushing ahead and, and making sure you do your best and uh, learn from others and bring, bring them up with you. Uh, the people that mean something to you, 
you want to be able to help them at some point when the opportunity presents itself. And uh, like I said, you, you have to persevere through adversity because there's going to be some things that happen that aren't really uh, conducive to you. Continue to pat, push your way forward, but just fight. If you get knocked down, get back up. And once again, just uh, enjoy this time. Learn as much as you can. Ask as many questions as you can. And hopefully you choose to go to Penn State and attend Penn State. And uh, you just enjoy the rest of your time. And everyone continue to stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wally Richardson. We truly appreciate your time today. Uh, that was a great motivating speech. Uh, definitely giving our students, our future Penn Staters, a lot of keys to moving forward in the future as well. So now, we, before we bring up Mr. Sam Richards, we have about five minutes to ask Mr. Wally Richards some questions live, not in the Q&A chat, but we will unmute you and allow you to answer those questions live. So we have a great staff that's waiting behind the scenes. So raise your hand. We have enough time of maybe about, uh, about seven to eight minutes for questions before we go into a live classroom experience with Mr. Sam Richards. So please raise your hands now. All right. Mr. Wally Richardson, I think we had a question. I just saw it pop this one had their hand raised. Let me look, check again. Okay. I think they dropped their hand. Okay, here, Miss Cheyenne Guthrie. All right, Cheyenne, I'm gonna allow you to talk, okay? Cheyenne, the floor is yours. Please unmute yourself, Cheyenne. So how did was it moving from South Carolina to Pennsylvania on your own? Well, it was, uh, it, it was, a it was okay. You know, where, where I grew up was a small town, state college is a small town. So there's a lot of similarities there, but at the same time, I grew up in a small town, but my high school had 3000 students in it. So Penn state's a big school. My high school was a big school. So it was, it was challenging, but I've, I've always been a pretty independent person and, uh, you know, I wanted to go to school out of state. I didn't realize it was going to be 10 hours away from my home. That's just the way things worked out. But uh, I was excited about the chance to kind of be on my own. But at the same time, you know, I, I was a guy that would call my grandparents, you know, at least once a month. And I talked to my parents once a week. So even though I was far away from them, I still made sure to uh, let them know how things were going, how I was doing it, and keep that close connection with my family. Great question, Cheyenne. Appreciate it. Any more questions? Please raise your hand while we have, like, you know, former NFL quarterback and Penn State quarterback, Mr. Wally Richardson here. So, all righty, we have another question, Mr. Richardson from Nasir Pitts. Nasir, the floor is yours. Go ahead, Nasir. You're unmuted. Go ahead. The floor is yours. Are right, we waiting on you, Nasir? We see you, you, you are unmuted, but we can't hear you. All right, so while Nasir is trying to figure out, uh, having a little technical difficulties, any other questions for Mr. Richardson while we have him on the line? We have about five more minutes before our next session. Please feel free to raise your hand. Nasir, you're still unmuted, so you should be able to talk. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you, Nasir. Uh, okay, sorry. But... Um... I was going to say, once you got into Penn State, did you find it easy to find that group that's just like you and is passionate in the same things you're passionate in? Uh, yeah. Nasir, it was pretty easy for me because, uh, you know, being a member of the football team, I was with a lot of like-minded like individuals that were serious about uh, getting a good quality education and also winning a lot of football games. So, it was built in for me. I, I think uh, being a part of the Achievers and the SMART program, that will help uh, you guys on that end as you learn to navigate school here at Penn State. 
Thank you. You are great question. Great question. Uh, Shine and Nasir. So we have some more questions. Uh, Wally, Mr. Richardson, I have a question. Yep. Who's your favorite professor when you were here? <laughs> it, it was not Sam Richards. <laughs> <laughs> That's a loaded question, Sam. <laughs> I, no, Sam, loaded question. Yeah, Sam, uh, Sam was, is a great professor, and I really enjoyed that class. I uh, learned a lot. I'm, I'm glad to hear he's going. He's taking the time to speak to this uh, group, and I, I think you know all of you guys will want to take his class once you hear uh, some of the things he has to share with you. Good. Thanks for the question, Sam. All right, Mr. Richardson, I'm trying to see if we have any more questions. Um, all righty. Well, Mr. Zeiss, yes, we have one more question. It's an answer live. All righty, let me see. I apologize. Okay. Mr. Richardson, does Penn State have non-competitive athletic clubs? Yes, those, uh, we do have club teams here. We have 31 uh, varsity sports at Penn State. But we do have some club teams. I know we have a the rugby program is a club team. Uh, we have a club basketball team. Those are two that I'm familiar with, but I'm sure there's some other club sports here at Penn State. And also we, we've got a great uh, athletic recreation centers across campus. So if you have been a, a student athlete or played sports at, at your high school, there'll be a lot of different avenues for you to continue to stay healthy and compete. And I think we have one more question, Mr. Richardson. This is going to actually be from one of our panelists. And I'm waiting for her to go ahead and type it on Ms. Uh, Garrett and go ahead and unmute yourself and ask Mr. Richardson. Hi, Wally. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I worked in student activities, so I just want to hear a little bit about um, your time at Penn State and what was your favorite part about Penn State? Uh, my favorite part about Penn State. I, I really enjoyed uh, my time at Penn State. It, it, it was it was challenging, but at the same time, I wouldn't I wouldn't be back here if I didn't like it up here. You know what I mean? So uh, I had a great uh, undergraduate experience, learned a lot. There, there's some guys that I went to school with that uh, I still talk to regularly, a couple of my roommates. So it had I had a real impact on me. And, and as I said, I wouldn't be back here choosing to live my life in state college if if I didn't love Penn State, if it wasn't special to me. Thank you. Well, we've got time for one final question from Mr. Wally Richardson, and then we're going to go into, I'm going to pass it back to my uh, lovely co-host for the classroom experience with Professor uh, Sam Richardson. So Mr. Richardson, last question. Um, they just keep coming in now. <laughs> <laughs> How did you balance sports and academics? Well, I think uh, that base was set early on. Uh, when I came to Penn State, I, I already knew how to study. So that helped a great deal. And uh, time management was already uh, a pretty big priority for me. So I knew when it was time to study and get things done and when I had time to do other things. So that's the biggest thing is just not getting out of whack with uh, your priorities. Like I said, you don't want to waste your time. You guys are making a... a some type of great financial commitment to go to school. So you want to make sure that you're getting the best return on your investment uh, because you don't want to have to do it over. You don't want to have to repeat courses. So you want to make sure that your priorities are in line. And I think that's the best way to be successful. Wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Wally Richardson. Uh, I hope everyone uh, back at home could take away something valuable from your speech. So thank you again, a uh, huge round of applause and we are